We start with the puzzle. Imagine two bullets with the same momentum, but one is made of rubber and bounces off the target, while the metal one enters the target and comes to a stop. Which exerts the larger force on the target? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this nothing nerdy lesson on collisions. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. You must be able to make calculations and predictions about objects colliding together. Explosions will be explained in the following lesson. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. Momentum is a very useful tool when it comes to thinking about objects which collide with each other. But to calculate everything about a collision, we also need to know which energy conversions happen. A very common example is pool or snooker balls. In this case, we usually assume that in the collision, no kinetic energy is lost. This is called an elastic collision, and it means that the kinetic energy of the balls at the start is also shared amongst them at the end. The momentum is also conserved in this situation, in fact, in all collisions. Here is the problem we'll try to solve. The balls have the same masses, and you will see that this means we don't have to know the actual value. We can just write m because it will cancel. The orange ball has a speed of 0.5 meters per second, and the black one is traveling more slowly at 0.3 meters per second. You may remember that the best way to work with momentum is to think about the before and after situations. So this is the formula for the conservation of momentum in the collision. And since m is present in every term, you can also write the formula like this. And you may also realize that we cannot solve the equation because there are two variables. We need a second equation. And we do this using kinetic energy, which we have been told has been conserved in this collision. This time we use kinetic energy equals half mv squared, and we can cancel all of the half m's, which leaves us with this formula, which also includes the two variables v1 and v2. We can now solve the simultaneous equations, and I recommend you try it as a mathematical exercise, but this is not something you have to solve in core IV physics. Here, anyhow, is the solution. As you can see, the velocities have exchanged. This exchange only happens for an elastic collision where the masses are the same size. What you need to remember is that in an elastic collision, neither the total kinetic energy nor the momentum change, and that the formulas for conservation for each of them can be applied. So the example we just saw is called an elastic collision, in which the kinetic energy at the start is the same as the kinetic energy at the end. As in every collision, the momentum is conserved. In addition to elastic collisions, there are three other types of collision, and in each of them, the total kinetic energy does change. This is not a problem for conservation of energy, because the change in kinetic energy has exchanged with one of the other forms, such as heat or sound. The next type of collision we will discuss is when the objects collide and stick together. Here is that collision. The two parts of the train have masses as shown in tons, and they are going to collide, stick together and move. As you know, the velocity and momentum are vectors, so their directions will be included in the calculation, using negative signs where necessary. We are going to take the direction to the right as positive. We're going to use the principle of conservation of momentum here, but we'll show that the change delta p is zero. This is really the same method as making the momenta before and after equal to each other, but it's good to see this method too. The units are not si, they're in tons and kilometers per hour, but we don't need to convert them to si because momentum is conserved in any units, and we're using the same units for mass and velocity all through the calculation. Here is the equation which includes v, which we don't know, and we subtract the initial momentum, and we know that the result is zero. There is no overall change in momentum. 
and now we find V, which is plus 13.6, which means it points to the right, and we include the unit, which is kilometers per hour. We could convert this to meters per second if needed, and then we round the final answer to two significant figures, and we state the direction. The collision will have been quite violent and noisy, and some kinetic energy is always lost when two bodies stick together. We have enough information to analyse it. The loss can be found by subtracting the final energy from the initial. Remember that the formula for kinetic energy is half mv squared. This time the units should be converted because our final unit will be for energy, and the SI unit is the joule. So we change tons to kilograms with a factor of a thousand and we convert kilometers per hour to meters per second by multiplying by a thousand and dividing by 3600. And here is the final calculation. You could stop the video to check that you understand it. The result is that 51 kilojoules of kinetic energy is lost. It's no longer kinetic energy, but as you know, this means it's been converted into other forms such as heat, sound and possibly the work done deforming the train in the collision. Here are more definitions. This collision was inelastic because kinetic energy was lost, and perfectly inelastic because the objects stuck together. Sometimes the objects do not stick, but kinetic energy can still be lost. This depends on the nature of the materials that the objects are made of. In the next video, you will see an example of a collision like that. The principle of conservation of momentum tells us that the change in momentum is zero. We write down the before and after data that we have, mass 2m velocity 2v, mass m velocity v to begin with. Afterwards it's a mass 3m and we don't know what the velocity is. We equate 4m plus mv to 3mx and when we rearrange we find that x, the unknown velocity, is 5v divided by 3, answer A. Here is the solution to the puzzle we set at the start. The two bullets have the same momentum, and the metal bullet transfers it all to the target as it enters it and stays there, but the rubber one will bounce off the target. This means that the change in momentum vector for the rubber bullet will be greater since it does not just reduce to zero, but travels away in the other direction. Let's assume that the time they are in contact is the same in each case, then the force exerted by the rubber bullet will be larger. Kinetic energy is a different matter. The rubber bullet carries some away with it, while the metal bullet transfers it all to the target.